So good morning, everybody. It's um, it's uh, what time? Nine thirty ish on oh, a Sunday morning. Saying. It's time to talk comics. I just oh. knew you were going there. See, I'm, I'm like you to do it. Oh. <laughs> that was the point. Got, I've been tricked. I got him to do. Let's talk comics. Uh, so uh, today we're going to talk about our reviews of uh, of last week's comics. Pretty good comics. What was, what was the date last week? That was July the eighth. Yeah. 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 Good God, we're halfway through July. I can't believe it's July. Can't, can't believe, believe it's not butter. Can't. Ooh, maybe you stole that one literally out of my brain Spray. as I was going to say it. Eh. So, nice, nice. Zingers fly fast to the Ta -ching! Ta -ching! Barry. Zing, zing, zing. Uh, it's too early for this, I think. No, it's not. No. No. Not too early. So, so fun times, though. Good times. Did you say fun times? Good times. Fun I think, I think. Eastern time is the fun time zone. Eastern time is the fun time zone? Yeah. I always thought California was the we fun time We have Florida. Zone. Oh. And, and Flor oh. F Florida oh. is fun in a way that California never oh. will be. Two words, meth gators. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Everglade penis. Oh, wait, what? Oh, no. Did that you didn't... say Everglade penis? Because there was a chopped off penis to throw in the Everglade. There was? Yeah, it was like 25 years ago. Where was Lorena Bobbitt? <gasps> No, different chopped up penis. Different chopped penis. That was Virginia. So anyway, uh, so I hope that that never happens twice to the same person. I, I why are we talking you about would, separate penises? I, all right, let's just. Record. I don't know how we got let's here. Just, let's just let's just go. I'm let's so just scared. go. <sighs> okay. Can we talk about the booby cover? That is a booby cover. Beautiful art. I mean, genuinely, yeah. Conan's pretty. Valeria's pretty. I don't know who this is. Internal art's pretty good too. So. Booby cover. Yeah, booby. Okay. <laughs> uh, somehow we went from meth gators to the Everglades penis. Did they figure out who it belonged to? Yeah, I mean there was a whole. Thing. Did he come forward? Ah, uh, <laughs> I see what you do. <laughs> Probably out the signs now too. Um, like a sieve. All right. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Ow, that hit me in the hurts. Um, Why are we doing this? I don't know. Neither one of us want to be having this conversation, no, no. and yet neither of us can stop. I'm completely uncomfortable. It was okay. a very good week for comics. Let's start the actual recording now. Not that YouTube is an actual. You're important, too. I don't know. Positive affirmation. Shut the fuck up. Sure. Okay. Hi, guys. I'm David. And I'm Garen. And we are the Printed Panel Podcast, and today we are reviewing the comic books we read since... July the 8th. July the 8th. Yes. Um, good week for comics. Not a massive week, but not a small week either. So it's good. I enjoyed this week. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Okay, we done? Uh, I'll give it a, uh, on, on a scale, I'll give it a five dick. You give it a five dick? No. It, what? You know, the American Bandstand? What's a five I dick? I, it's got a good tune. I can dance Is that better it. or worse a than a ten dick? dick. No, it's, anyway. So let's start with... A Blaze Comics. Are we talking size or magnitude? No, we're here? talking as in like, it's a Dick Cavett. No, no, no. Um, who's one did all the New York New Year's Eve? Dick Clark. Dick Clark. Yes, it's American Bandstand. You never heard that? It's got a good beat. I can dance to. So I give it a five, Dick, because he would ask what you think about that. On, on a scale of one to five, what do you think? I just sounds like a brand of. Have cleaner. you ever heard that before? It sounds like a brand of cleaner you buy at Walmart. Hey, old, can I get a five? To remember dick, American Bandstand. I actually don't remember American Bandstand. That makes me sad. So, reader poll, if you're listening to our podcast now and you've ever watched American Bandstand, please chime in in our comments So on YouTube. One of two of the Sumerian. This is, so, who, who published that? This is Ablaze Comics. For, I'm mostly known for the Merck and Dolphos on Sacred. <laughs> I mean, it's like... I mean, we shouldn't be laughing at that. It's really, it's it's really, really quite cute. Through, but that's, that's how they've made their money, is Merck and Dolpho, So, um, As this, you should. But this is the... Chimera, this is the... the, the, Conan, Samer the Samer Samerian. Samerian. This is the Conan story. This is one of the stories from the 17 that he published back in the 1930s uh, for Weird Magazine, right? Strange Tales? Okay, sure. I mean, strange adventures. I can't remember which, which weird one. Weird fiction. Um, I don't know. So him and H.P. Lovecraft, they did things. So this is an ancient city that these. Um, I, I'm not even gonna pretend I know what the races are called, but they they basically invaded the city. There's a few people left, and then they almost died because of these giant monsters or dragons, but they're just really 
the dinosaurs living outside the city. Well, Conan and Valeria kill the last one in the first issue. They get in the city, it's completely empty, and then they find this one slave who's like, hey, it's not empty, there's people here. And they go and find the people. And in this issue, they're praised, and they find out that there's actually three rulers, and now there's down to two, and there's factions are split, and they're like, hey, listen, if you can help us find these people, we'll, we'll, we'll reward you. So Conan kind of chills out, and of course, these other, this other group invades and attacks, and when they do, um, the queen, who is immortal, we find out, captures Valeria, and it's going to basically steal her essence so she can live longer. Continue to be immortal. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Conan, She's not, that's not immortal, that's rechargeable. Rechargeable, yes. I mean, that's, that's honestly, like, like yeah, I am yeah. the rechargeable sorcerer. Yes, so, you are. So the, um, the king loses his head from Conan. No, the king loses. King dies from from the, from the queen, and the the other ruler, one that's been lost for years, finally comes back. Kind of chops his head off. Valeria kills the woman who's been trying to kill her, and and they walk off in the sunset. So for those of you out there who are who are like, why is David not holding up a copy of the Sumerian as well? My problem with this book is the word uncensored. Um, I like. Conan the Barbarian. I don't know. What about it? It's uncensored. There's no nudity. There's no sex. There's no language. There have been in some of the other issues. Well, I mean, in the... I, I, in I the don't need... In the Black Sails there were, but in these two there were I don't need Conan to drop the F-bomb. I, I don't. I, I There's something about I that... I don't think he did. Maybe, I just, maybe I'm just so desensitized to, to swear words anymore. I just don't care. But, Hang out with me. No. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, need, I need Conan to be more focused on... Getting the booty in both the literal and figurative Speaking senses. Speaking of, we can't go in this week, next week in comics. Yes, yes Marvel's going in. Marvel kind of. Yeah. So, but I did buy this to because the cover's awesome, otherwise known as the booby cover. Because so, the queen has a nice rack, and she's rechargeable. So, Join the Future 3 came out from Aftershock. Fantastic book. This has been really good. The girl has, essentially, she's lost her family. She's lost her home. She's got a, she's got a Colt 45 with her. She's trying to get ammo. She goes to the Dark Man. And who basically is a collector of things, and he basically she almost dies because she's attacked by a wolf. He saves her, and he's she's like, well, "Can we give you ammo?" He's like, "No, I'm not giving you ammo. I'm not helping you. I'm not helping you go kill, kill try to kill people from this uh, this futuristic place. They're gonna kill you. No, but no, 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 no." So finally, she convinces him, and she says, "I'll bake break bread for you." He says, "Fine." So he pulls out this these laser guided weapons. He's I mean, he, he's like, "Let's use these." She's like, "No, I want my six gun." He's like. No, at least use these infrared goggles. No, I'm a six gun. She's just stubborn. So finally he trains her how to shoot the gun. She's a Luddite. She's not stubborn. She 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 wants to do it her way. I got that. So he lets her go. Uh, she immediately goes to the sheriff, who she's going to try to kill. And of course, she now is using one of these later guy weapons, and she doesn't set the charge correctly. She almost kills herself. He basically comes to rescue her, but in doing so... He reveals his true self. He was the mayor of Tulsa, and essentially he allowed Tulsa to be the first major city to be taken over by these future people. And he's regretted it, but the reality is, is he does the same thing to her. He says, listen, I'll take your gun. Just go join the city. You'll be fine. Uh, that's where we'll end, and we'll be issue four this week, I believe. So, so have you ever shot a revolver? Oh, yeah, very much. There is something very pure. Very satisfying. Very... Uh, if, if tomorrow someone handed me a laser pistol that, a phaser, hey, a phaser, yeah. that I couldn't miss with, right. I would not enjoy that at all. Um, because there's the, it has nothing to do with me. I mean, why just sit the phaser down and say, shoot that Kia, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's done. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, if I you know, pull, my new car. pull out my we'll Taurus Judge, yeah. And I'm trying to shoot the it's emblem off the front like of your this car. Thing is massive. It is. It you is. Just beat someone to death with it if you wanted to, instead of just killing them. Just shoot all the bullets and just beat them to death. After five shots, that's what that's you do. It, it just, uh, you hit them with it. Yeah. But but I mean I get it. I, I appreciate. There is some part of me that is just uh, not American Bandstand, but just enough in the past. I don't know anything about Five Dick. Um, that um, <sighs> that. That I appreciate kind of the message, the Luddite message. Well, here's there. the thing: it's, it's not just Luddite. She's it's her father's gun, and it's just and I get all this. It's, it makes sense. So, um, talk anyway. about your next one. Oh, Archangel Eight. Uh, it's gonna be a while, guys. I'm just AWA Archangel Eight. Good story, but I'm kind of done with this one uh, because mainly it's because it's very predictable. It's Punisher who's an angel. 
Punisher's the most predictable character in all comics. Yeah, I mean... What's Punisher going to do? He's going to shoot somebody. It's, I mean, it's, it's a decent story, don't get me wrong. AWA is a good job. Excuse me. It's just this one is... I'm kind of done with this one, so... Mm. It is what it is, so I'm okay with that. But, Something Stealing Children from Boom Comics, I'm not done with because it's freaking awesome. <laughs> Love this. Seriously, you're looking at me funny. This is a fantastic book. So, I just wanted to know why you went all cackly supervillain so over it. Li so, Lily and, and this guy who basically shows her boss, they're going back to the station to go take the, the girl who survived mm -hmm. and use her as bait. Mm -hmm. Well, the, one of the other cops figures it out, tries to stop him, uh, and she says, fine, take her. I don't need her. That's fine. We'll deal with it. Uh, in the meantime, the the kid who's been the the Roy, I think it's his name. His 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 brother was one that was one that was killed. He's gone back to the woods to go find Lily, and he encounters the the young beasts who are now coming after him because they've gotten because the mom has gotten to kill another kid. So now he's kind of cornered. This is this has been excellent, and I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, James has done a great job here. So I'm not calling him Tiny anymore. I'm just calling him James because we're on a first name basis now because he's awesome. So, did you take of, him on a date or something? It's just he's awesome. I'm just saying. Oh, you now, don't get to just name drop him by first name because you. So we're, you want to talk about Tiny? Because he's awesome. You're talking about James. And his well, awesome let's talk kids. about James Tynan the fourth. Yes, Mr. Tynan. <laughs> Senor, who I don't know. Senor Tynan. I don't know him either. It's just. It's just. So I'm, that's what I mean. I'm not going to call him James Tynan the fourth. I'm going to say James. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Good. God bless no, you. Not. You're going to go. <laughs> Okay, I might, I, I might squee a little bit. I might squee a little bit, but that's it's just a little squee. All right. And then Heather's going to elbow you, and then you're going to have words come out. Batman 94. Yeah. So. Oh, you're doing great, man. Keep going. No, no, you, it's your turn now. I don't, I don't you read remember, this? I don't remember what happened in there. You don't remember Batman getting up and... I remember the compression the, bandage on his the Joker, leg. He's and splashing Joker's neck and taking his head off. You remember any of that? I, I don't remember the last part. It clearly is the kickoff issue. Oh, so we have no idea what happened to Harley still. Right. No clue. No, Harley was not in the issue nope. at all. Nope. nope. But I think that's the fun of it. I, I think I, what I'd love to see is her rising up out of the out sewage. Of the, out of the sewage going, oh, I'm going to kill that mother. <laughs> just <laughs> just trailing up. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, essentially, he's his money's gone. Lucius Fox has been kidnapped. Uh, the cat is basically, she's safe. But she's with the rogues. The penguin, yeah. The, the penguin. And, the, and in the, lockdown. In lockdown. They're like, listen, he's, he's like, listen, I'm keeping you safe. So my problem with that is, like, the cover of this says the relationship shattered is the Dark Knight prepared for war. Like, is the relationship shattered? I don't feel like. No, no. Like, he, I wish they quit doing that. I guarantee he knew this was going to happen in some way, shape, or form. He didn't care. And, and, and what do you call him? What's this guy's name? James. Okay, so James. damn it, James. The whole bat cat thing didn't need to happen again. <laughs> they get on the phone. Bat. She's she's in the hospital. <coughs> he says cat. She says bat. And a little part of me dies. But it's so it, it's but it's so now this is a thing now because of because of Tom King it's now a thing, and we're gonna allow it to be a thing because we're comic book people and we love what happens. That's why we're gonna allow it to be a thing. Can I not reject it forever? No. no Why? You can't. No. No. Because I said so. That's no, no, no. 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 You can't. So. See, I like how you've pulled both covers on, on the comics, and then you just pull the I one pull that one I you didn't don't have. Exactly. Yeah. Bam! Yeah, good job. Um, By the way, Sean Murphy, thank you so much for this cover. Oh, my God. Fantastic. That is just, beautiful. Yeah. This is this is what you want to see from any Batman anymore. No. Yeah. So. Although, I mean, this is awesome. No, no. It's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. And and this is enough of the Batman the Animated Series look to make you really go, oh, this is a continuation. And this is not the Animated Series look at all, really, other than the costumes. But, I mean, seriously, though, I mean... Looks a lot more like the Murphyverse, because it's done by Murphy. Really? I can't imagine Shut what would make you think. Anyway. <clears throat> so, awesome. Love it. Um, I, it's interesting... Deathstroke was never in the animated series ever, yeah. and and De and he would have been such a nice addition. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you got to remember when this took place. Deathstroke was in his very early days. Yeah, it was early, comparatively speaking to now. So it wasn't so, nearly as popular as he is today. Yeah, God, the animated series was how many decades ago? That was the nineties. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Deathstroke is in town, and basically he's courting. Robin and Batgirl. Batgirl to join him away from Batman. But he's being paid to do it. There's, 
there's not just him being an altruistic. No, no, he's doing it for a reason. It feels like Ross Al Ghul. Yeah, it feels like yeah. Ross Al Ghul. Feels like Ross. Yeah. And and apparently, even though the fact he's an international assassin, like Batman doesn't just immediately kick his butt. But the reality is, unless he's doing something too Batman or too Gotham, there's really no re no reason for. He's him. a murderer. But you know. What is Batman going to do? It's like, I'm taking He's you the in terror for... that flaps in the night. Wait, that's Doc Wing Duck. Um... Speaking of the 90s. <clears throat> no, this is excellent. I can't wait for I'm, I'm, it's, it. Is, I'm so disappointed it's only six issues. Really disappointed. So, we have the Millerverse, which we very rarely get an entry into. More recently, in the past few years, we've got Golden Child and Master Race. We've got the Murphy verse, which we're getting pretty much an annual entry into. Yeah, hardly be there moving that soon. Oh god, I can't wait. Can't wait. And um, I really would not mind seeing. Do we want to call it the Denny verse or the animated series universe? Yeah, I mean, that'd be fantastic. I, I would be a hundred percent comfortable if if they continue to do spinoff books. I kind of want them to do a Justice League uh, Unlimited oh, and, wow. and a Superman and yeah. and wrap them all together. That'd be fantastic. So I mean, we've already seen Superman in this. Well, and this may be the test market to do that. Right. So, uh, what do we got next? Deceased Dead Planet? Yeah. How many covers yeah. of that did you buy? There are only 17. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's three. So, but yeah, there's there's two cool covers. Now, this, I have the Splash cover, too. It's fantastic, but these are just so, so beautiful. So, I recommended Deceased Dead Planet number one for speculators. Mm -hmm. Wow. What a Good book. reason. <laughs> wow. What a book. <laughs> uh, yeah. This I mean, is the Taylor verse. Yep. Tom Taylor writes Deceased, and... And by the way, if you haven't read Deceased, it's available in hardcover right now. I don't think paperback's available yet. Um, very good run. A lot of stories you probably can find the single issues. Issue one, though, is close to impossible to find right now. Um, I think there's still some free combo day versions out there somewhere, though, from, from October, October Fest, October Halloween Fest, whatever they called it. Uh, but uh, very good run. Um, and Dead Planet, essentially, Cyborg was one of the first to die. In the, in the first issue. Literally, he was one of the first to go. Well, he's not actually <clears throat> dead yet. Well, his head was separated from his body. His head was separated from his body, but that, that actually took place... So it filled in a little bit of information about what happened. So Unkillables, Unkillables doesn't touch on the fate of the rest of the world. It's no. kind of what's going on... In just that one little portion. Yeah. Just blood and, and slash Gotham. And so this is truly the sequel, and... Now, John, they've established Earth 2, mm -hmm. which I think it's hilarious that it's called Earth 2. And there's several several years in the future. They've been at war, even with, though they don't want to be at war, with an alien race. And um, John, who is very uncomfortable being called Superman, uh, Damien doesn't seem to have that problem being called Batman. Nope. Uh, and Cassie and Black Canary as Green Lantern... Which all the other lanterns seem to be there as well, except for yeah, Hal. Yeah, Kilowog or Hal was, ooh, that was vicious. Yeah. Vicious death. Um, so, so they're, they get a <laughs> signal from Earth. Um, the and, Morse code. And, and the signal is in Morse code, and it's, um, it's oh. Cyborg relating to them that there's a cure. Yes. For the anti-life equation. And... So, Wonder Woman, who has been anti-lifed, um, finds Cyborg standing, locked up, and rips his head off. Right. Which should have killed him, but well, because the, of the mother box technology, the human it didn't. side of him is dead, but the electronic side is still alive. The cyborg right, part right. is still alive. Yeah, exactly. And then they show up to. Yeah, they come, Earth. they come back to Earth, and of course, Lois Lane, president of the, of the new planet, of Earth. Of yeah. president of Earth, is like, I don't want you to do this. He's like, Mom, I'm going to go. She's like, fine, be safe. And of course, Lantern, I'm sorry, Arrow goes with Dinah, with Dinah which he shouldn't go, because she's like, but you don't need powers. He's like, so? I can still go. I can still be effective. <laughs> Here, hold this sword. <laughs> so, yeah. hold, hold the God Killer. Yeah, I'll hold the God Killer. So, yeah. Um, and they get there. And they find Cyborg's head. Yeah. And Cyborg says, look out, she's behind you. And they say, who? And then Arrow immediately almost, get, uh, it looks like he's killed. Which well, just, just, she definitely stuck super fingers in his chest. 
and 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 anti life sim, and Dinah flips out and grabs. She's gonna kill. She's gonna kill Wonder Woman. Like I'm taking your head clean off. And of course, John's like, no, chink. And he's like, there's a cure. <laughs> so because he can hear the very quiet thing that Cyborg is trying to say. Yeah. And so we we may have a dead John. Kent. A dead John Kent. I don't in, think so. I don't think so. The either. arm, but I, I don't. I mean, know. I don't know. You go through here. You could go with straight a to the kryptonite heart. sword. He's gonna heal human slow. But is it kryptonite though? I thought it was just a god killer. I mean, the I thought reason literally half of it is green. Is that it is a it is forged uh, half kryptonite and half myth mythic in metal, yeah. No, it's been, okay. Uh, and so it can kill Wonder Woman. It can kill anyway. any god and and Kryptonians, because killing Superman became a thing. That are bad. That are bad. That are bad. So, yeah. Well, I mean, actually, it's more of a compelling storyline if you don't have John at full strength. True. Yeah. So. And of course, I figure, Damien's like. He's gonna have to. Dana's gonna have to break his foot off on someone, so it's gonna be kind of fun to watch. So. I don't think Damien cares that much. Uh, I think he does. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think. Know if, I, I don't think know this is literally his best friend in the entire world. I don't know if he does. I think all, or the, if he I think all his compatriots are gone. I think that this literally is his best friend in the entire world, or whatever entire universe, if you want to call it that. So, do you read Detective? I haven't yet. No. You really missed out. So, Detective Comics number ten twenty three. Mm -hmm. And they're saying by 1027, the Bat Universe will never be the same. The Joker, and I pulled this out for you more than for the uh, for our audience here. The Joker is basically tomb robbing. And guess what kind of tombs he's he's pilfering? Uh, these are the wings. No, these are the Court of Owls. Oh, the Court and of so Owls. And so he has their wake up serum, and wakes up Lincoln March. Wow. Who is one of the most deadly talons of all time. This is the one that Batman had to take down single-handedly, right? Yep. Yeah. And um, meanwhile, trying to resolve Two-Face, Two-Face has grabbed the rabbit suit. <laughs> Two-Face actually broke into Gotham PD and got, what do they actually call that? I can't remember what it's called, but, but the rabbit suit. The bunny suit. The bunny suit was perfect, yeah. yeah. Um, and while while they're throwing down, um, he met, uh, Bruce manages to slap basically an electromagnet right here on his head, and it pulls the bullet that's in Harvey's brain out, which I'm sure felt amazing. <laughs> yeah. um, and right as Harvey's like, what, "What am I doing?" You know, he has his Harvey moment. Um, that's when Talon shows up to kill Batman. I'm going to have to read this this week, aren't I? The detective's really good, man. I'm going to read this week. It's, it's Tomasi. Tomasi's done a great job with the, the so DC. I, he really, I, really joke, I joke that there's a Batman hierarchy. Scott Snyder comes in and starts things off. Mm -hmm. Tynan comes in and cleans up. James. <laughs> and Tomasi <laughs> comes behind and, yeah. and, and, and pins Tomasi's been, um, been doing been doing detective, doing detective for a long time. Yeah. Since, it, since the number change. It was, was it Williamson that took over? I have no idea. I can't because I can't remember because who took over at Rebirth. So I picked up Detective at Rebirth, okay. and I, I didn't read it in the New Fifty Two. Okay, and it has been one of the most consistently fun. Now, sometimes they're two or three issue standalone stories instead of having the longer narrative like Batman, but it has been consistently. I, I loved and I, I love the Bat Family that they started. That, yeah, that they had. it really was fantastic. So, the Flash. Number 757. Yep. Barry starts the issue remembering killing Zoom by breaking his neck, which is just an amazing way. Like, first panel is just full, full, full splash page of Barry breaking Zoom's neck and him thinking about all... Which is, I mean, which is appropriate. But Zoom will be back, so... Yeah. Well, so and he, 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 he did. He of course has to have... A yin and a yang. That's that's what they do. So that's, they'll bring him back at some point. Well, he's back right now. He's back again. But he was remembering when he killed him. So Barry's racing around trying to figure out what the hell's going on with Zoom and what Zoom's planning. He can't find him anywhere on Earth. Right. And he... I don't like that sound. Was that the door? Or was that the camera? Oh, well. We won't worry about it. Uh, if that red light goes out, we'll start worrying about it. That's the alarm. So... You have, a, you have a trouble setting. Can we wait till after we're done? Well, I can I'm, I'm make sure I hit the code. I mean, we're not 
do anything weird. Uh, no, it's got a trouble. It's, I recognize that yellow triangle from, you know, the thing I do for work. So anyway, yeah, he just armed it again. So anyway, guys, sorry. The Flash um, hit star two. Um, the Flash is... Um, the Flash is trying to find out what Zoom's up to, and he races back to the Flash Museum at one point, and then Grodd attacks. And in a different part of the city, Captain Cold attacks. And in a different part of the city, the turtle breaks out. And in a different part of the city, the trickster is out. And so all of these covered here or covered villains from the Rogues Gallery are all working together to basically overwhelm the Flash. Right. It's brilliant. It's a fun read. Um, I think I think Wally's gonna have to step in and help Barry out at some point. Wally's still a thing. Is that well? He's not mentioned anywhere in here, but wait, Wallace or Wally? Wally. Okay. Where's Wallace? Well, he's there, but he's useless. Okay. Because he's not really a good Green Lantern. Not really. Good. No, he's definitely not a good, not a good Green, Green Lantern. Lantern. Not a good Flash. He is not, not a, a good, good Green Lantern. Kid Flash. So you're still reading it. You can't mock it. You're still reading it. This this not a mock. It's a the hell. Um, wow, it's even too. What is it? You're, it's too weird to explain. So, okay, he essentially title. He's been. What is the title? Green Lantern, season two, issue five. Thank you. Um, it, it is. They look like they're Kryptonians, but they're reverse Kryptonians. So it's like this Ultraman, but it's not Ultraman. Ultraman without the. Uh, Kryptonite snoring. Yeah, I mean, God, it's so weird. This is just this is just, cocaine. This is just yeah. They're I, not Daxamites. Uh, no, they're not Daxamites because they're an alternate reality thing. It's uh, okay. You and Grant Morrison are in an abusive relationship. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> he keeps giving you trash. Yeah, but I feel and like you keep bending over and grabbing your ankles and thanking him for because what's going to happen at some point. This is going and you to pay shift four dollars. For that garbage, minus your discount. Minus your so, so you can't complain about it. You've chosen to be in this relationship. But it wasn't so much complain as a what the hell. So no. anyway, let's move on to Justice League Forty Eight. Forty Eight, yes. 48. Yeah. So pretty cool. They go to this you know alien civilization after they figure out that there's these kids that have been set adrift and mm -hmm. and uh, on memory bliss. I, wow, it's definitely nineties. You got me there. Um, now he's saying my PM dog. So it's, it's this is how you disarm a gear. It's funny. It's like uh, they're they go and they take down this evil ruler who's controlling everybody. She's got zombie minions at her at her at her disposal. And they're like, rule us, oh great Justice League. And Superman's like, okay. <laughs> and Wonder Woman's like. Wait, wait. I don't think we should. That sounds really bad. I got the wisdom of Wonder Woman and the compassion of Wonder Woman. We probably shouldn't do that. And Bruce is like, mm, yeah. eh, not really my thing. And and then, and then, and then, and then, I was going to give you a chance to jump back in. And then, well, keep going, that? keep going. I'm with you. Keep going. They find out that they need to be ruled because a giant, big ass robot's going to come and kill them all. <laughs> I'm telling you, like. It's a Saturday morning cartoon kind of a Justice League issue. It, it very much is. It's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. we're going to be the rulers of everything. But it does feel it very... It did feel very Super Friends. It, it feels really very good. Super Friends, very 70s Justice League, which is kind of a refreshing thing. I, it's a it gets back of, to actual Justice League. And it's Spurrier writing it, not uh, Venditti. Yeah. So this is, maybe the Spurrier's doing maybe a couple of you have Vendetti yeah. break, I think, yeah. Well, they're... they're or Vendetti. They're or Vendetti or Vendetti? I don't know. I, I don't want to mispronounce names. It's V for Vendetta. I don't give a damn. <laughs> you know what it's not? It's not James. No, it isn't James. Because if it were James, it'd be, you know... Oh, wow. Perfect. You, you just, so you just negatively <laughs> reinforce the writers. Like, it's not Vendetti or Spurrier, because they're not as good as James. Uh, oh, James is amazing. James but but look, look, who, look who he, he studied under. He studied under... You know, Scott Snyder, so arguably one of the best writers in the modern universe. Why do you have to shame writers? I'm man? not shaming. I'm, totally I'm saying. Shame. Speaking of no. shaming, Tom King. Oh, yeah. He needs, 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 needs no shame. So, in the first issue, Bruce has contacted um, uh, 
uh, Mr. Terrific, and he's like, listen. I'm too close. I'm too close to this. What's going on? And so um, Mr. Terrific basically then kind of researches it and tries to figure out what's going on. He reads the book. And what's interesting is the whole time he's in this, the T-sphere is following around asking him questions. Following Adam Stranger around asking following Adam, No, no, following uh, Mr. Terrific, oh. asking him questions, trying to keep his memory fresh. It's like, what were the two, uh, what were the t- first two Romans? Or quite questions are, that were that are not easy for everybody, but he would know who the, he'd know the answers. Very simple questions, so very complex questions. And um, what's basically what he's doing, he's trying to figure out if he wants to actually work with Strange or not. He's trying to figure out if this is a, Adam Strange, if this is a good thing. And, but the other, the other side of the story is Adam Strange is, is flashing back to when he actually had to go rescue his wife and his daughter. And what you're finding is his daughter who everyone believes is dead, really isn't dead. They believe that she's, they, they think she's dead, but in reality, he figures out she's not dead. And when he confronts Strange at the end, he, Strange is like, no, let's go find her. So this, this is where the story is. Issue three is out this week. I'm actually kind of excited. So so did that actually drop last week or did it was it delayed? It was two weeks ago because, yeah. and, and we were shorted a few. We finally got them back in. Um, Freaking diamond. Well, I can't have any more of the diamond out with DC. So um, I have one from IDW. No, not IDW. This there's no turtles. No turtles this week. Turtles this week. Um, 106, which we'll talk about in the previews. Episode. So this is uh, Star Trek Year Five. This is issue 12. Uh, Gary Seven is on the Enterprise. He's kicked. He's thrown everyone off the Enterprise except for Kirk. He's trying to make Kirk plunge the ship, in, plunge the Enterprise into the planet where his people are. Because essentially the Enterprise is going to cause a major time incident. He's trying to prevent it all. His, bo- his boss has done it. But of Kirk, being James T. Kirk, stops him in a most glorious manner. Almost kills him. Then Gary Seven gets back up and says, you can do this anyway. Uh, Scotty puts, um, puts Spock on the bridge with a phaser. They take Gary Seven down and they're, they're able to rescue everybody. But it's ominous because there's something more going on. And now at the this is issue twelve. They have to go back to let's go back to back back home to Earth because the, this is almost the end of their five year mission. This is the first five year mission for them, and they're they're almost done. So this to is to seek out new life and new civilization. That's true. So um, to boldly sleep with green women. Oh, oh, and they're Orion. Okay. So anyway, so good story. And uh, you were about uh, to talk about Orion. No, I wasn't. Girls. No, yeah, I wasn't. You were. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Nerd. I'm very excited about that one. But let's talk about Image for a minute. Let's talk about Adventure Man. Wow. So good. So the Dotsons, God, I love you all. Um, I, I love the art from this. The inter- I mean, the, the cover art and the internal art are exactly the same. Yep. They're the same quality. Very few comics, just the, the brilliance of the cover match the internal art. Well, sometimes the covers are just boring. Right. Unless they're like... Or totally freaking misleading. Or exactly, which I've never understood why you mislead. But anyway... So, Adventure Man. So, we found out some things in this one. We found out that Mom used to be a, a cop. Yeah. We found out that... Pretty sure she, because she lost her hearing, she couldn't be a cop anymore. But I guarantee that she lost her cop, her hearing in some way, being right, a being cop. A, exactly. So, she, she decides, she takes her kid to school, and she decides, as she's talking to her son, that... She's going to investigate this address that's in this book well, that they found. The kid finds the address. Right. And he's like, "Wait, the publisher is the pl- mom. This is the pu- the publisher is at the address of the Adventure Man stuff. What the hell?" Right. I mean, it's like so she goes there, and first of all, she sees this huge. But building. on the way there, the, on the way there, she's riding a Vespa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and and she rides by some cops and snatches one of their <laughs> coffees on the way by. Which, by the way, you can't do with that hand. I can tell that. <laughs> that Fraction doesn't ride a motorcycle or that the Dodsons don't because this is your accelerator. You can't snatch with your right hand and continue to drink because your, your your bike slows down. Exactly. You could have gone the other way, but then you would have hit the cop car. So anyway, little things like that bug me. <laughs> it's like, get the physics right. You had to pick that one apart. Yeah. Gotcha. So anyway, so she snatches the coffee and the other cop's like, we got to go arrest her thief. And they're like, hold on. She, no, she's no, one no. of us. You don't know cool. her. You're, you're new. You don't know who she is. And so she shows up in front of this majestic art deco building. And there's no one else can see but her. And, and she talks to a guy <laughs> and the guy's like, it's a dump. And he sees like an old boarded up theater. He sees what's actually there. No, I don't think so. You think that the actual the building is not, the building really is what I she sees? I think Lamont Cranston can fog the mind of mortals, and and she can see through it because she's been allowed to see through it. That's because a of reference the book. to 
The shadow yeah. knows. So, yeah. Uh, just yeah. in case you weren't going to say anything. I was trying to just softball one through and... See if anybody caught it. Yeah. And, and like, my, oh. bu my buddy Kevin will be like, Ah, oh, you made a shadow reference! And it'd be great. Good job on the shadow. And then you... The shadow knows. Mess it up by bringing it into focus. Anyway, so she goes in. There's automated defense systems everywhere. And I like how you had to fix your alphabetization. Like, I was just on top for some reason. I think it was good. Anyway, so. And, <laughs> and, uh, she, 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 well, she, she finds out that she gets in because, because the woman who came to meet her is, is basically crazy, like, crazy ghost lady. Okay. She basically is being held there by Dr. Evil, whatever. Baron. Baron Evil. <laughs> <laughs> it's Baron Blight, but. <laughs> Baron Evil. Baroness. I'm a noble whatever. evil. Thank you very much. So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, good story. Oh, it's, it's excellent. This is. It has so many details that I can't absorb all these characters' names in a single reading. Well, here's what's great about Terry and Rachel Dodson is when they do something, it's not just a blank canvas. That there's tiny details all over. The place. I mean, Sean Murphy does the same thing. There's all these little details all over the place that if you really don't stop and really scan what you're looking at, you may miss it. Or just the fact that there was like 13 characters in. Their pulpy Justice League oh, yeah. in the first issue, and I don't remember their names. So we're gonna write stuff down next time, don't we? I'll do a reread. Okay. Talk about being on the stump. On the stump number three. Gross. So there's been lots of corruption going on in in politics ever since Lincoln did this, you know, beat down thing. Uh, but a lot of it too has also kind of gone on because. Yes, the slaves were freed, but if you didn't have money, you couldn't learn to read. So this group, this underground group, has been you've been feeding people, but they're teaching them to read, and they've been doing this subversive things for years. Well, the FBI now has been kind of trying to investigate. Well, that's the thing. The the woman in charge now, she is she's been fired from the FBI, and now she's trying to investigate. It's been a great story. I'm I'm very very happy with this. Prezi did a fantastic cover. I'm. This is one of my favorite new, very underground books. Even though it's image, it's not really underground, but it kind of is. It's been fantastic. So I'm I'm very happy to see this continue. What's the title? On the Stump is issue number three. Now, this came out last week. We got shorted. We finally got him back in. So um, I think we got to quit doing the I didn't get this before thing. Because it confuses people. It does. It does. I think we. I think we got to say. Well, there's one. The one we got shorted this week, and the one that you, you know, nobody got from the store is "Make God Loves Me and Kills." I do want to talk about that next week because it's a very important issue. Um, but we could catch up on it when the second issue drops. We could. We, we should do, do it all too. at one time. Sure. Yeah, and that's not. I think we got to think about that in our format because so. release dates for comics are about to get very muddy anyway. Yeah. 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 And you I, can tell from our Freeding Empire, <laughs> which has their dates laid out, but it's incorrect completely. Dirk so. Strange, Sergeant Supreme. So he's going to try to find his weapons, basically the ones that have been illegally used. Only person who knows where his forge is has been killed, and thus keys to his forge have been stolen. Well, except for, remember, his space girlfriend. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Who, who was a white version of the blue people from Avatar without right. the hair rape. Exactly. Thingy. Um, she 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 got kidnapped and she's doing it. It's her. Um, you think Madame Mask is her? Or you think Madame Mask? No, Madame Mask has her. Has her? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's probably right. Uh, so yeah, he he figures out that what's going on and and that uh, where everything's been being being stolen, where it's being sold at this at this mythical realm, and uh, he goes there with Doctor Druid. Doctor Druid is undercover as him, <laughs> gets captured, and then because Madame Mask doesn't. Eat go by Madame Mask in this infernal environment where right. she's selling magical artifacts to demons. Right. So, yeah, this is this is going to be an interesting line. I'm going to make sure we kind of find... It's basically going to be Doctor Strange versus Hell. It's going to be a really good, really good read. Didn't we get that with Ghost Rider? Yes, but we need it again. Hey, if it works once, do it again. Uh, Fantastic Four, Empire, Issue Zero, Shameless Money Grab. You could have told the story in about three or four pages. You could have just put it in a regular issue of Fantastic Four where Valeria and Franklin end up in a cosmic casino and <laughs> Invisible Woman catches them gambling and helps them cheat. Like, that was the whole fun of the story. That's like, big, actually. Uh, what's happened is... is uh, That's what I took away from it. The, um, the collectors, who is an elder, his sister, also an elder, she what's has... What's her name? Um, you don't remember. I don't remember her name. The Prophet. The Prophet. Profiteer? The well, profiteer a, or the profiteeress? She's a war profiteer is what she is. Yeah. So 
she basically has gotten two children, a Kree and a Skrull, and she basically is having them act out the final battles. Did I miss money shot this week? Son of a bee. No, I don't have my money shot. <gasps> yeah, I my money shot. Oh, I, so I'm sitting here, guys, and I'm looking at our stacks, mm -hmm. and, and it's like one for one. It's like... We're talking about Fantastic Four I just Empire. Literally, I literally just forgot to put it in my stuff. And then Ghost Rider number seven. I and then myself. Strange Strange Academy. And then X Force. And I'm like, why do I have one more comic than him? And you've missed Money I Shot. I should be ashamed of myself because Money Shot is amazing. Well, the good news is this isn't an issue. And even me telling you about it won't ruin it for you. Oh, good. Okay. So Empire was, this was, this no, was a filler. Do not say it was good. It was a filler. It wasn't it, an essay filler, but it was a filler. It was a $5 money grab. It is half of the $10 money grab they did if you count the Avengers issue. It has an Empire F won. all to do with F all. And I'm sorry if you bought this because we talked about it. I apologize. It was a mistake on our part. We should know better. If you like Fantastic Four, Family in Space, it was okay. Yeah, I mean, it was typical of them. Yeah. It was, so... Uh, all right, so then we have... Okay, I want to talk about the dumbest damn thing of the week. The dumbest damn thing of the week. Garen came to me and he's like, look at that beautiful cover. I want this Roll cover. that beautiful bean footage. Okay, <laughs> this is Ghost Rider number cover. seven. Yeah. This is the dumbest damn thing that it Marvel has it's ever done. First of all, I don't want any more Marvel zombie covers of anything. Do not give me Marvel zombie covers unless the person who orders is such an asshole that you only need to give me a, another choice. But um, the a skeleton cannot be turned into a zombie. <laughs> if you have no meats on your bones, you can't be zombified. <laughs> you cannot zombify a skeleton. I reject your metaphysics, Marvel. No, <laughs> stop it. Story's good though. No, it wasn't. No. Actually, it was very disappointing. Oh, you're disappointed. Okay, so Ghost Rider number seven. Is, is really the combination of the first arc yeah. building up to the conflict between Lilith and Ghost Rider. Or Lilith and Mephisto and Ghost Rider. Which ultimately will just leave Mephisto on the throne in hell. I mean, I know what's going to happen next. Well, duh. But that's the problem. I don't like really super predictable shit. So anyway. But I mean, it's comic books. We, we, no, we go through this all no, the time. no, 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 no. No, not that badly. So that a few pretty issues pretty ago, pretty that was insanely predictable. Um... A few issues ago, Johnny threw Danny Ketch. He took the spirit of vengeance away from him because Johnny's the king of hell. Threw him the water, just literally threw and, him in the water. And dropped him off the top of the Brooklyn Bridge. Yep. Okay. No, you're dead now. I will point out that's his half brother. Yep. That's a dick move if it isn't your half brother. Right. And so, uh, yeah, bad things. Super bad things. So, so then the spirit of penance. So he goes. So he goes to purgatory. Danny goes to purgatory, mm -hmm. uh, fights Belasco's champion, becomes the spirit of corruption. Corruption, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And comes back into the mortal realm where they throw down briefly with Punisher and Wolverine, and then and the nun with the way too hot tatas. That's very uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> She's a nun. She's not supposed to be wearing a mesh shirt and a black bra. Like hey, 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 hey. What she wears on her own time is, is not your problem. No, it is. It is my problem. That's very confusing. <laughs> hey, Mama, what's up? I'm married to God. Ah! <laughs> Stop! So, uh, I'm so sorry I asked. Yeah, exactly. And then what happens to you, or what happens in Money Shot happens to you. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, this... Basically, Johnny is kicking the hell out of Doctor Strange. Oh, yeah. And Mephesto's like... Beating the crap out of him. Go ahead and kill him. No. Come on. Come on. You, you can, can do it. Him. Yeah. And I just pictured you throwing down and me standing back going, yeah, hit him there. Yep. Hit him in the groin. Yep. Yep. You know? Hit him in the junk. <laughs> yeah. And, One more time. And so... Um, Put in that work. Yeah. Danny shows up <laughs> and basically drains the corruption. Oh, my God. So corny. From, from Johnny, and and the corruption is that he's been giving demons the penance stare. You give a human the penance stare, you you basically experience their evil, but it's not enough like smut on your soul to mess you up. Yeah. You give a demon a, t a penance stare who's been in hell committing atrocities for millennia, you start going wacky. And I was like, no, I don't want that to be the story. That's stupid. 
it would be much better if they all thought he was corrupted and he isn't, and they're corrupted. And so I got really disappointed because there could have been a great story come out of it, and instead they softballed it. So there's more to come though, and we find so so Danny drains his corruption. Johnny goes back to normal, but he's like, I'm not done. Well, he's still Ghost Rider. Yeah. He, but the, the corruption is gone, which and, is kind of cool. And so Johnny grabs Mephisto and heads to hell where he knows he's going to be fighting Lilith. Danny does what Danny does and screws off to a bar, his bar, the yeah. fadeaway. The fadeaway. And I like the fadeaway. I'm like, that may be the name of every bar in every role-playing game I ever use yeah. ever. Fadeaway. That or the Bannered Mayor. Uh, so... They go to the fadeaway, and he goes in, and his really hotsy totsy pixie manic pixie dream girl um, bartender and his girlfriend are in the clutches of Blackheart, Blackheart. <laughs> and Blackheart's like, "Hey, I'm not gonna let Lilith take the throne. Are you gonna work with me to help me undo this?" And Danny should, in no situation, work with Blackheart. No, no. because Blackheart murdered his mom. Yeah. There's no situation in which. But I don't think that I think at this point there's no there's no stopping it. He probably would have said, "Well, if you just asked nicely, I probably would have you know yeah. lend you a hand because the, I don't want Lilith to take her either." But it's like all you do is ask nicely, just say please. That's all you need to do. So I love that that's your moral out of it. Like, <laughs> Garen's like, "This is how you teach children to say please." You have the son of the devil show up. And, <laughs> one of the sons of the devil. All right, I'm Speaking not, of sons I'm, of the no, devil. No, I'm not writing that in my book, but no, not you. Tell me I can't. Strange Academy number two. <laughs> Um, Fun book, man. Speaking of Sons of the Devil. This is going to be outdoor mom. So, so, <laughs> so, this is basically the kids attending their first classes. Yeah. And really, the fun of the book is watching each teacher interact with their students. So, the ancient one releases a genie. A jinn. Yeah. A jinn. Yeah. Genie. D J I N N I G. But there's just Jin. There's no right. Jin. I know. Hey, uh, okay, it's right. anglicized. Right. Anyway. So he releases and says, "Get it back in its its lamp without magic. Go." <laughs> and because uh, you're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my favorite though is the Ilyana. <laughs> so Ilyana. Ilyana and Damon Hames Hellstrom are going to teach the kids about hell. Which is pretty cool. I mean, it's a great idea. She's, yeah. she's, she's the queen of hell. You know? Queen she, of limbo. Queen of limbo, excuse yeah. me. So, the who's the well, kid? Well, her and Johnny Blaze started dating. That could be really interesting. Who's the kid who comes in late? Um, uh, well, the, one of the Asgardian kids. Exactly. One of the Asgardian kids who is uh, who's Dormammu's roommate. Um, Dormammu shows up. Dormammu's there. Uh, the, the kid. Doyle Dormammu. Doyle Dormammu. He's there, obviously, already. So this kid. So shows the kid comes in late. He mouths off. <laughs> Ilyana banishes him to limbo, and then Dormammu starts yay woo, and then poof, and she banishes him too. And <laughs> that was, was the, the entire the entire issue. They're fighting their way through limbo. <laughs> yeah. But they're enjoying it and they're bonding over it. They're bonding. It's like but <laughs> they're still in. Like, when the, they finally come back at the end, they're like. You don't get any food. I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> well, they, and his brother, the Asgardian's brother, yeah. um, basically is at lunch going, "Where's my brother?" And then they fall through the portal. And um, anybody getting lunch left over? And it's, I mean, Doctor Voodoo had a had a zombie <laughs> teaching the kids about undead. What's interesting is there was a question asked by one of the kids: "Is okay? I know there's a price to magic, but we're I'm not going to pay the price." We're not going to pay it. Yeah, and. The question was, "Oh, we took care of that." So, they go to, doc, to they go to uh, uh, Doctor. What's his name? Doctor Voodoo. Doctor Voodoo. And they're like, "Why well, are we going to tell him?" He, he's like, "No." Yeah. <laughs> Don't say a word. They have taken care of the price of you magic know what you're for about. for time immemorial. So, um, it's really good. It's it's a lot of fun. It's great. It's great magical metaphysics. And it's uh, typical Scotty Young. It very yeah. much is typical Scotty Young. He does teenagers and uh, their uh, their adults to go with him very very well. Uh, he yeah. really he has the interaction very well. Yeah. So I did the same thing in the Middle West and, and he's anyway, so. X Force number ten. Wow, I love Black Tom, man. I didn't think I was gonna like Black Tom. Black Tom, he's just awesome. He's a douche. He is a douche, but that's why you like. But that's why you like him. But yeah, because you're so, like okay, he's kind of so a they're dealing with the Terra Floronic plague basically, yeah. which. Beast created. <laughs> so, so in, in, in trying to stop them, Beast inadvertently went, oops. 
<laughs> so Black Tom has been so connected to Krakoa for so long. They've asked X Force has asked him to be their backup. Yeah. Because he has powers over plants. Of course. And and he he can't get himself to step through the portal. <laughs> and Krakoa's like, no, don't go. I like you. Stay here. Krakoa, like literally, he's grabbing. No, 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 you can't leave. No, yeah. no, no. Because Black Tom is a protector for Krakoa. Right. That's a big thing. But there's the symbiotic relationship there. And and so Black Tom eats a little bit of Krakoa, <laughs> a little bit of the soil. And then Krakoa's like, okay, I'm with you. I'm in your belly. We're good. And he goes to the portal. It's so creepy. It is creepy. <laughs> but it, that's Black Tom. Right. So they they end up, he goes through, and Quentin Choir, Wolverine, and Domino are basically just dead. Yeah. And and have lost to this terrafluoronic cult. Well, it took, it took a while. But even then, Wolverine... Logan was still there. He's yeah. like, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get out of this thing. I'm going to break my foot off. I mean, he's literally like, I'm going to so kill you. Uh, and I he's, think he's the only one that survived it. I think Quentin and Domino were killed. Uh, Quentin is definitely killed. Domino was not, I don't believe. Because Quentin, there's, like, there's, there's flowers coming out of his eyes. Yeah. He's gone. Uh, so, But Domino, I think, survived. Well, here's the thing, too. This is my favorite part. So so Gene comes to Beast and like, like are, are, you, are you serious? I have to come down here and do this? Are you, are you serious? I have to come down here and fix this? He's like... Well, well, she's the official leader of X-Force. She is. She's the official leader of X-Force, but he has taken over this role. And she's like, so you're, let me get this straight. You caused this problem by messing with things you shouldn't mess with. And he's like, yes. <laughs> and didn't bother to tell us or the council or anything. Well, and, you, you, wanted, you, wanted, and, you wanted deniability. So she saying. reads his mind, figures out what's going on, grabs Sage. Black Tom's losing. Yeah. And then Jean basically mind melds Sage herself and Black Tom, and shuts down the Terraphoronic. Well, she she cult. turns off the Terraphoronics. Basically, she she has it go against itself. Yeah, yeah, has it fighting its own. Fight, so Wolvie, itself Wolvie survives for sure. Oh yeah, pretty sure Domino did too. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, well, there, there there is an interesting little aside between Domino. And Wolverine, where Wolverine's like, I can't believe you let yourself be resurrected without all your memories. Yeah. For somebody who spent their lifetime trying to remember everything, it's very insulting. And and, I, and you're making a mistake, and you shouldn't do that. And she's like, hey, hey, if I want this, would you shut up and leave me alone? It's, exactly. It's, it's like, hey, mind your business. And and so in the end, you get the hot tub scene with Wolverine and Jean Grey. There is no question Wolverine and Jean Grey are okay. Can I get a yay? Can I get an amen? Can I get a hand? Can I get a clap? Well, a he, said, he says it well. He says, I'm not for you most of the time. But every once in a while, you need a little bite of poison to, <laughs> to let you remember what life's like. So I like I like Cyclops and Emma Frost better than I like Cyclops and Jean Grey. Um, I like Wolverine and Jean Grey better than I like Cyclops and, and Wolverine. But I do think... That there is something between Cyclops and Jean Grey. Yeah. And if they ever do the Children of the Atom storyline where they've had kids. Oh, yeah, that was my favorite part of Empire reading it. Big ad right in the middle of Children of the Atom. Children of the Atom, like, which has been canceled. Uh, no. <laughs> so you're going to be a little sad that you didn't read Money Shot number six. I am. I'm very sad right now because is that a dildo on the cover? Or is that a cucumber? It doesn't matter. Or is it oh, my God. <laughs> wow, I was going to try to softball this in. So. The Money Shot team has been in space filming their porn yeah. for some time. They, I mean, they went to a planet. From, yeah, they escaped from that planet after being almost killed. They end up on a planet that is the equivalent of Christian hell. <laughs> and they come back from, from that. And the, the, the dean of their college shows up and says, I can't believe you're out there. And it's a woman. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> deep voice. I'm going to do it anyway. I can't believe you're out there amongst the stars besmirching the name of this university. Besmirching. And, well, I don't even think that's what it says, but uh, this like is that. my interpretation. Besmirching is good. I like that word. That's a good word. So she looks at Little Shot and says, can you incentivize the dean, please? And Money Shot or Little Shot transfers money to the you know, alumni association or whatever. And the dean says, all right, good work. Keep doing what you're doing. And walks <laughs> off. Because we don't really care about our reputation, we just care about getting paid. How much? And okay. we're good. And then um, the major point, plot point of the issue, is this uh, war, this alien war against this clearly biological thing, and and you're really kind of caught up in it. And you're like, why are they, 
why are they doing this? Like, what is the, what's Tim Seeley doing here? And then you realize that uh, she is going to the gynecologist because it really hurts every time she pees. And the gynecologist happens to be one of the sex blurs, so uh, she says, eh, you know, you're, you know, you've been out there in space and there's skin to skin contact and there's this and there's that and the other. You probably picked up an STI and we'll see what happens. And she says, well, I've got to take a culture and it'll be back in 48 hours. And at that point in time, we'll know what you got. And the, the doctor flips out because, oh my God, I can't wait 48 hours. And she way overthinks everything. And so her, what her colleague told her to do, she said, go back to your house and instead of worrying about this, start planning your next adventure. And she said, no, okay, I can. And so she gets her search engine up and she starts doing that. Instead of doing that, she's like, search for jobs that someone who has herpes, gonorrhea, and AIDS can do and not cause problems. Like, she ends up way overthinking and deciding all these things. And then it turns out that all she needs is one quick round of antibiotics and she's fine. It's just a little irritation. And then you realize that this alien... Um, saga that's playing is actually the infection and the antibiotics show up to destroy it wow yeah oh it's really good it's very well written it's uh it's tim seeley it's tim seeley it's a it's a saga in the micro and it sits up and i guys i gotta admit i'm, I'm giving a little less detail because my boy here hasn't read the book and i know he will want to pick up a copy today and enjoy it i'm reading it um but but definitely a fun read Mature content, not for your kids, but if you if you have a liberal sense of humor, um, you will enjoy Money Shot thoroughly. Not for kids, what? <laughs> As he yells, is that a deal on the cover? I didn't say it like that, did I? Uh, you went pretty out there with it. I don't remember using the uh, the aforementioned uh, southern accent on it, sir. That was a nice way to put my redneck. I wasn't going to say redneck. You said redneck. Right. Did I say redneck? No. No. It's your, right. your determination. You got anything else to add to this episode, or are we just going to banter? No, I'm really disappointed I got a mess money shot. Yeah. I feel bad. <laughs> Everybody's disappointed when they miss a money shot. I know, right? Right. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Meet us on social media. I can't believe we've talked for an hour. Has it really been an hour? Yeah. Wow. Okay, we've talked a lot. That was too much. <laughs> we're, we're doing too much. We need to tone these down. We, it I, it we needs can. to be 30 to 40 minutes. You're right. At I, most. 54 is way too much. Um, uh, 57. Definitely.